Welcome back. Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth. And our guest, David Garnstein Ross, Foundation for Defense of Democracies, senior fellow, just discussed Egypt. And now we move to the NSA program, the report of errors that have been made. And we look at the amount of data that they're looking at. And some have argued, well, the errors that they've released from the latest audit, they're what is it, 2,000 plus errors, but in proportion of billions of pieces of information, well, it can be backed up by saying, hey, that's a 99% rate of success, less than 1% rate of failure, letdown. But there are all sorts of concerns with the NSA program. One of them has to do with jurisdiction of the FISA court and the issue of compliance. Rand Paul addressing some of those concerns and overall the concerns with the NSA program that has turned it for so many into a scandal. He was answering John Roberts' question on Fox News Sunday regarding those issues. Roll it. Well, there's a couple of problems. One, they may not have jurisdiction, but two, they're only hearing one side of this. So if you were to go sit down in a room and the NSA tells you why they're doing all these things correctly, you have no means of challenging that. You have no means of alternative information. And without this Snowden leak, in fact, we wouldn't even know of this internal audit. Without the Snowden leak, we wouldn't have known that James Clapper lied to us, lied to the Senate, and said, oh, that we were not collecting any data on Americans. And it turns out, yes, they're collecting billions of pieces of data on American cell phones every day. Tell me something, David, as you hear the exchanges going back and forth, it's a bit complex. You're the genius, so we're just going to ask you. You look at the law, you look at the reports, you look at the programs that we focused in on, which are the we're, we're looking at PRISM, and I'm blanking on the other, but you can explain it to me. Give me a thumbnail sketch and your thoughts on Senator Paul's approach. Well, the thumbnail is that really what the question comes down to isn't, you know, end the NSA. Um, even Senator Paul wouldn't ad does not advocate that. Rather, the question is, you know, where should the line be drawn? Do we have sufficient restraints? Um, and I'll say uh, I have uh, fairly deep concerns about the NSA's collection, uh, including its collection of metadata, which I think is, is in my view, um, too intrusive. Uh, I don't think that it's necessary for investigations that are being carried out. Uh, and I think that, that it's getting a bit too much information. Um, then the other programs that you have, you know, PRISM, Boundless Informant, um, X Key Score, what all of those are are tools that are used for gathering information. Tools themselves are not the problem. We know that NSA has tools to gather information on a variety of Internet users. The question is, are the, are the constraints strong enough? Now, um, the various various journalists who've been working on the story, like Gwen Greenwald and Barton Gelman, you know, argue that, that there aren't enough restraints. Um, but uh, their reporting uh, often, um, in my view, uh, doesn't quite match what's in the documents. Um, they, uh, you know, they they have a maximalist interpretation of what NSA is doing. I think that, that concerns have rightly been raised, uh, but I'm not convinced that there are massive violations going on. And certainly the report um, that you referenced um, about you know, all the uh, NSA uh, improper collection doesn't establish that. As you said, the rate of error, like, none of this, none of the error, none of the collection that was improper was the result of someone misusing the system intentionally. And this was all the result of, for example, uh, someone who was abroad entering the United States and so when they crossed that jurisdictional line, the NSA collection followed them, um, you know, improperly determining that individuals outside the U.S. when, in fact, they were inside the U.S. I'm not saying none of that is problematic, uh, but the success rate is much more than 99 percent. When you look at the rate of error versus the massive amount of information that they collect, it's a very, very small rate of error. Does that mean it shouldn't disturb you? No, it doesn't. But it's much less alarming than the press reporting, which I think is actually quite misleading, has led on. And it's been irresponsible, I'd go so far to say, as well as some of the comments that I'm getting from the, I agree, there's a focus on it, but from the likes of Senator Paul, because he's looking at it, and P. 
Peter King came out and said, hey, what he's saying is not true. And while I understand we're in a scandal environment because of a whole host of things that have been violated by the administration in regard to the IRS, I look at the NSA and I say, wait a second, a lot of hysterical allegations, but as you said, we go to the evidence, we're not seeing it. Right. No, I, I agree with you, Crane. Uh, and I think that I, I, I full, actually, you know, I usually disagree, but I fully agree with you about <laughs> Senator Paul. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think that you know, he's clearly taken a very populist course. Um, he's, you know, trying to, uh, on, on most issues that he takes, he has um, a pretty hard line of view, um, you know, mm-hmm. wherever that is, you know, uh, way out to the left or to the right. Um, and in this instance, you know, he's drumming, you know, for all he can. The notion that there are massive violations, uh, and you know, he has a point that you know, if you're sitting in the room with the NSA, you're only getting one side of the story. But the flip side is that what he's doing is the exact same thing. He's inferring the very worst possible. And obviously, respect Senator Paul, but disagree with his approach on this one. And that's what we're we're going to do. We're going to call it out for what we see. David, moving forward. Give me the step you'd take with the NSA program specifically. Give me one recommendation you would make. Well, okay, here is the primary recommendation I would make in NSA, but I wouldn't just stop at NSA. Um, I would limit the retention of data. Uh, right now, um, you know, I, I would make sure that NSA is not retaining data uh, that it collects indefinitely, but rather I would make sure that the data gets purged uh, after a specific point in time, and certainly for U.S. citizens, such as the metadata that they're taking. That's the very first thing that I would do. And I'll add one other thing, Crane, which is that yes. this should not just apply to the NSA. It should also apply to commercial providers who are actually way more intrusive of your privacy, privacy than the NSA is. Hands Man, down. just wish I had more time with you, buddy. It's always a pleasure. We're out. You hear the music. The band's sitting there going, Crane, i got to play the bass. They're doing it. I'm like, all right, band, we're out. But, David, it is always a pleasure, my friend. Thank you so much. Crane, oh, my pleasure. Take care. David Garnstein Ross, Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth. I'll do a crane after, wrap up the show, and give you my final thoughts on, well, I'll give you my final Nothing But Truth for Monday, August 9th. Teenth, thank you. 2013, thank you, genius. All right, Crane Durham's nothing but truth. Thanks so much for being with us. Live down in your life. Pass your heart. Always keep the faith in Jesus Christ. Know that God knows you. He created you. He loves you. You're worth it. Don't ever forget that. You're hearing this. Recognize it right now because it's meant for you. Crane Durham's nothing but truth. Probably on AFR Talk. <laughs>